You're listening to the Marginally Geeky Show, the Epically Geeky Book Club. Greetings and welcome to the Marginally Geeky Show. Second try. I'm your host for the evening, Eugene Stevens. Uh, tonight I'm joined by Chris, Ray, and Sean. How are y'all doing? I'm having deja vu. I know. Right? Yeah, this is kind of weird. <laughs> oh, yeah, hey, at least I'm hitting, I hit record this time. Yes. Um, tonight's episode, we are discussing The House by the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Klein. Uh, Chris is Clune. Clune. I'm sorry. Why? You know what? I think I think my phone kept auto correcting it, and I just never went back and got it again. So you are absolutely right, T.J. Clune. Uh, yes. My apologies. Um, Chris has a physical copy of it, so you could probably guess that it was her pick this month. Um, Chris, why did you pick this book? Um, like I mentioned before, before you hit record, I uh, <laughs> had seen it on Bookgram a couple of times of people's top five fantasy books that they've read this year. And then I read the little blurb. I'll read it again. Uh, I loved it. Uh, it is like being wrapped up in a big gay blanket, simply perfect. And that's by uh, V.E. Schwab, which that she was a, an author I picked the last time it was my pick. Yeah. Um, so I was like, why not? It's a one-off. It's um, so, you know, kind of low risk if I didn't like it. And yeah. You know, sometimes it is nice just to find a one-off. Of course, yeah. the problem that I find is the last time, couple times I've done that, I'm just like, I'd kind of like more of the story, well, though. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. But, yeah. you know, and then we run into ones that's just like, okay, no, I'm not, I'm not continuing this. this mm-hmm. is not, so. um, yeah. Well, let's go ahead and just go around real quick for uh, initial impressions. What was, what's your initial impression of the book, Chris? I loved it. I loved it so much. It, it is, it's not like being wrapped up in a big gay blanket, but it is, it is like, it's very, it's almost comforting. I mean, it's just sweet. I, I just thought it was a very sweet story and I absolutely loved it. And I physically read it, so I know the narration is different, um, but I, I just I absolutely freaking love this book. We So much so that I, I bought another one of his books. Oh, okay. Yeah. Have you started on the other book? or No, apparently. The girl, the lady who was at the bookstore, she's like, yeah, I read it, and I really cried in the tub. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to wait. Oh, okay. It's a book about grief. Um, TJ Klune, um had a partner for a few years and passed away. So the book is mm. sort of that. Um, yeah. So I'm not ready to cry yet. We'll save that till I feel sad. And I'll read it. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> Ray, what were your thoughts? Uh, not gonna lie, it took me a little bit to get into it. Uh, and then once I got on the island, I was like, okay, got into it a little bit more, and then. The, the kids made the show as far as I'm concerned. Uh, really enjoyed the story after that. Uh, and I finished it just behind Sean. So I was thankful that I wasn't the first one, but I was <laughs> the first one to, do, to be done in this house mm-hmm. me. for a good week and a half. <laughs> wow, really? Yeah, like, me. Come on! <laughs> Today we need to talk about stuff. Like, what, part what part are you at? Let's, yes. let's talk about that part. Nice. Yeah, and you can tell he was just like he wanted to say things, and then I'm like, don't you dare spoil it. It's the first one. <laughs> I don't want spoilers. I wanted to just let it happen. I'm like, don't, don't say anything. And you could see him kind of try to like. So the wheels were turning. Like, okay, how much can I say before I ruin it? Well, but I also so I really try not to influence. Right? Like, yeah, there's that's a, it. okay, I, I'm you know this is this is your story that you're listening to or you're reading, so. Mm-hmm. I will not tell you either way whether I enjoyed it or not. I just, I need to talk to you about parts. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I liked it so much that he's asked a couple of times to listen to it in the car. I'm like, I have the voices in my head. If I hear them differently, I'm going to be mad. So let's just, I'm just going to. Ex- yeah. So it's, now I only need to listen to it on my own. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, Sean, initial thoughts. Um, I really enjoyed it. It was, uh, <laughs> Very reminiscent of uh, Nathan Lowell, um, that feeling you get after a Nathan Lowell story. It's, there's no real highs, no super lows or anything. It's a very even keel story, which is nice after 
you read so much or listen to so much and a lot. So this was, uh, the story wasn't, it wasn't too like spectacular mm -hmm. or anything like that. Um, yeah, it was just a nice even keel story and I really enjoyed it. Yay, I won. <laughs> yeah, you, you, this I one I'll listen to again, Chris. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> um no i enjoyed i enjoyed the book as well um a little bit like ray i didn't have to get all the way to the island first um it very much was we were talking about this on another show recently um pushing daisies if you ever watch the show pushing daisies it's this super colorful super quirky just kind of a feel-good show and that's the, that's the vibe i got out of this book um what is the name of the organization he works for for the um, oh it's the department the department uh, oh the department in charge of magical youth yes yeah. okay first off the name and i'm just like what is with the name of this like this is the weirdest yeah. name for a you know for some kind of a government department i'm just like okay i think I think I have an idea of what kind of world we're entering here where it's like, this is an okay name for a department. You know what I'm saying? And that just kind of set my mood for it. And then, uh, like you said though, Ray, like once you start meeting the kids, that's when it kind of really grabs you and really pulls you in. But the whole time I'm just like, what, what weirdness am I first off? I mean, you already have to expect, okay, well, there's obviously magical kids. Uh, you know, to what extent is, is this happening? Um, and, you know, and my first thought was, OK, are we talking like kind of a, you know, a Harry Potter type thing or whatever? But it's not it's not like that. They're not they're not learning spells and, and, and doing stuff like that. Like these kids are just they're you, it's almost better to compare it to like the X-Men, to be honest with you. Like they're they're more so mutants, say, than saying magical. But yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, I it was just a nice warm feeling in and. In, and reading the book and the whole time I thought, no, I, I like these characters and stuff. And kind of what I was saying before, it's one of those things. It's like when I finished with the book, I was just like, well, are there any more by this author? Cause I think <laughs> I would keep going. <laughs> so, um, all right. Well, that being said, let's kind of, you know, we, we have not pruned our questions yet, but we'll just kind of run through some of the ones that, you know, are, are a little more interesting. Um, favorite part of the book, Chris. Oh, um, Again, I usually don't have favorite parts. I have favorite characters. And for me, it was Lucy. He's my favorite. I love that kid. Just mm -hmm. because there is a part in the book where he where he understands that he's older than what he actually is, except he's experiencing it all through a six-year-old body. And mm -hmm. it comes out this way. Like he knows and knows he's older than what he is, but it's coming out this way. And I just I thought Lucy was a little bit a little <laughs> And like you're just like this. Anyway, I love Lucy very much, and um, that he was my favorite, one of my favorite parts of the whole thing. So, and, 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 yeah, what was what was yeah, Lucy's what was Lucy's uh, magical possible? Oh, that's right. Who's the son of the devil? Son of the devil. <laughs> <laughs> it, Lucy's short for Lucifer, and Lucy is six months, six, six years, six months, and six days old. Yeah. Uh, and his, you know, his father is the devil and then mother is unknown, know, but, yeah. <laughs> but he was, he was my favorite part. That and the end was also my favorite. The way it ended was beautiful. I just loved it. Cause I was, so, as I was getting there, I'm like, listen here, Linus, <laughs> this is nonsense. If you don't, oh, and then you, and I'm like, okay, we're good. And I, yeah, I actually really loved the ending. Ray, any, uh, any particular favorite parts? There's, there's two that stand out for me. Well, there's three that stand out for me. One was the first adventure that they go on that Lucy leads into the <laughs> forest. I mm -hmm. uh, really enjoyed that. And then uh, um, be, and I really liked that like uh, he, uh, he understood the importance of him being invited into the house and stuff like that. That, that, that was really cool. Um, the other part that really stuck out to me as well was the... Uh, the trip to town with all the kids into the record shop and mm -hmm. and like the, the gardening sh store and like <laughs> all that was really great i really enjoyed that too yeah. and then uh obviously the big speech at the end i think was was kind of my other favorite part i could see that being on a on screen where it's a really emotional part and um I'm trying to think of who would deliver those lines of 
who I would cast as that character. But oh, okay, yeah, David Tennant. I was thinking that he's actually <laughs> he's, he's, he's a little too he's old, but oh man, I think he could deliver that so yeah. well. Oh, probably. So anyway, those are Sean, my Sean. Any particular favorite parts? Um, the one that stands out the most for me is when uh, after they're in town. Uh, when Chauncey comes back with the bellhop hat. Yes. Yeah, that just how excited he was and how the bellhop had showed him that it was, yeah, that really stood out for me. Mm -hmm. I particularly like near the end when uh, Linus goes back and because in the beginning of the book, you see like he, the, he works for this organization and it's very, it is super tight. It's super yeah. strict. Like they're constantly watching over your shoulder and he goes back and you can tell he's already gotten his mind. You know, he's got, he's got a plan going, yep. but his like devil may care, just attitude about everything. Like what, what's your problem? You got a problem? Why don't you come over here and tell me about it? And just like, no, 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 I'm, I'm not going to say anything. Like he, I just, something about that. I was just like, yeah, dude, hell yeah. Like just, you going to fire me? Go for it. Give, yeah. I dare you to fire me. Cause all that does is give me the, you know, I mean, granted he was, he was trying to get the information he needed to enact the plan he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. uh, but whatever. Okay. If, if I get fired, Oh no, I guess I have to move back to this little island where all these people have like, you know, I've I think I've fallen in love with everyone, you know. Yeah. Oh darn. So uh yeah, I, I, I greatly enjoyed that part. Um let's see here. Um any least favorite parts of the book? Um I, it's just a I didn't like the neighbor. Really oh. <laughs> hit her real bad. Um like she was umbrage level, like Ugh. hated her uh but that that's uh, that was really but she needed to be part of the story right like it, it's about linus's whole growth of you know just trying to fade into the background and and not standing up for himself because he didn't want to make any waves too like well fuck you yeah take the house go ahead i don't care anymore exactly yeah but that was that but i love i mean i loved everything there wasn't anything i didn't like about it Ray, any least favorite parts? I, I was thinking about that. Um, I was thinking maybe the beginning a little bit, but then when it, it hits home more, when he's talking about how much rain it is, how like it's really down, it's really, and then when he gets to the island, how bright and colorful everything is. So when he goes into returns, he still has that spark in him a little bit, but you can feel the heaviness of of the uh, where he's working. Mm -hmm. So I I don't really have a on a Part that I don't like anymore. So it, just because the ending fits better, right? John, um, one with the narration, um, gazebo. It's freaking pronounced gazebo, not gazebo. <laughs> oh, oh yes, god. that's true. No, I can't. Freaking god! And he only says it a couple times, but yeah, once no, was too true. many. No. Um. And a couple times, um, I found Linus's inner thoughts were, I don't know, a little over the top. Um, like they weren't too bad, but you get Linus's inner thoughts enough that it did get a little annoying after a time. Mm -hmm. It's like, seriously, dude, you're thinking like that, but uh, <laughs> whatever, whatever floats your boat. Uh, Gotta show that's your inner monologue. Because some people don't have an inner monologue. Yours is a little bit more articulate than mine is. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. But that, the minor, minor quibbles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, I, I can't really think of anything, honestly. Um, like you said, Ray, it, 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 the way the beginning end wraps together, uh, um, is, is, seemed well done. Um, so yeah, I, I'm going to say I didn't really have any like, kind of least favorite parts. I'm going to jump to the next one. Um, what did I think of the writing? Uh, I enjoyed it. Like we've kind of already hit on it. It's very, uh, whimsical is that I guess, I guess, I don't know if I use that term already, but that was the term that came to mind is it's very whimsical. Um, the, uh, and we'll talk about the, uh, uh, the narrator in just a bit, 
But um, I never got confused. I never got confused. He was talking. Mm-hmm. All of the voices written wise are very clear. Like you very cl- clearly know which kid is talking, which adult is talking. Uh, there's never a part where you're just like, who said that or whatever. Um, narration helps with that, but just the writing for each kid is so different in their thought process and, mm-hmm. and what it is they, they want, what it is they're after. Uh, it, it, it was, it was well done. So Chris thoughts on the writing. Oh, it was delightful. It was delightful. I loved it. Whimsical, the whole nine yards. And then I thought he was British. So then I looked him up. I'm like, no, he's American. I'm like, Oh, well, hmm. nailed the British narration. pretty Well, um, but yeah, I thought the writing was really great. I liked the pace. Um, nothing felt to, at least for me, it didn't feel like it dragged on at all. Um, I loved the way he wrote children. I have a yeah. big thing about that. When, when I'm reading something by an author who, A, hates children, never had kids, or has nieces and nephews, and they're trying to figure out what it's like to be a parent or whatever, and you can tell, and it it annoys me and I, he doesn't have any kids, but he understands children and how adults talk to, should talk to kids, right? Like they're people, mm-hmm. you should talk to them like they're humans, they're not stupid. So the way that Linus, I love the way that Linus interacted with all the children and it was just like, yeah, that, yes, see, they're smart, they're intelligent, they have lots to offer, they're so deep and multi-layered creatures and, and I just love the way he, he wrote the kids, it was awesome. It's funny, I was just listening to a podcast the other day and they were talking about how much they loved, I want to say it was the new the new Spider-Man movie. And that's kind of the thing they brought up was the fact that uh, at no time do the, I mean, they're not kids, I mean, they're they're young adults, but at no time do they not sound like young adults. It's not like, you know, there were there were times, especially, you know, in a lot of pop culture that it seemed like, you know, kids were either super dumbed down Mm-hmm. Or they tried to make them sound like hip, cool adults. And it's like, that's that's not how kids talk. Like, they just, yeah. they're usually very truthful, very, and a lot of times very blunt. Like, you know, why did you do that? Why are you this way? Yeah. And we're are very much so, here are my feelings. This is this is what I'm thinking and feeling. Yeah. And, and yeah. want to know the same thing. Uh, so, yeah, no, I, t- I totally get that. So Yeah, I just like um, Linus's curiosity with the kids too it's, it's it, that's how that you know that's how it should be like when you yeah i i get really annoyed when writers are like okay so you just hate kids and we're just guessing here right okay right. <laughs> i don't like this <laughs> ray thoughts on the writing i i think you you hit everything that i was going to talk about the only thing that i wanted to add was <clears throat> i thought it was very smart in some ways um especially when he's talking about chauncey uh, hiding under people's beds Aww. because he was told he was a monster, monster and that's what monsters do. Like that's such a heartbreaking look at that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I thought it was a really good way of, of tying that into a real world um, with magical creatures. So. Mm-hmm. Sean thoughts on the writing. You tend to be the most critical of us on, yeah. <laughs> on the writing. So I'm interested to hear what you think. Um. The writing itself was really, really good. Um, I uh, I did like the way, it, like, he was really good at writing differently per character. Sometimes it gets jumbled up and the characters start acting identical after a time. Now, I think it helps the story wasn't really that long, mm-hmm. so you didn't tend to run into that problem um but it each character was very distinct and it did help that the narrator really made it distinct as well um but uh there was times that it almost seemed that the kids were being written as adults it was like okay i don't think kids would get this much depth into what they're saying um but then like uh talia she's like what 120 years old that's a Mm -hmm. kid for a gnome so yeah (laughs) or something like yeah something crazy so you know what you're gonna learn something in that time otherwise you're totally stupid but uh um 
Yeah, all in all, like all the kids are he wrote them very innocent. Like even the son of Lucifer is very innocent, <laughs> um, which is great. That's what yeah. kids yeah. are. Well, not all kids. Be realistic. Not all kids are like this. Um, but yeah, there I I did like the writing style for this book. Um, since we already kind of touched on the narrator, let's talk about the narrator. Um, thoughts on the narration, John? I thought it was, he was great. Um, <laughs> like I said, very articulate. Like every word was like pronounced perfectly except for the gazebo thing. Um, <laughs> and I, who knows, maybe it's a regional thing. I don't know. Um, but the voices for each of them was spot on. Uh, the, it was one of those things where you instantly hear the voice and you, and as you learn about the characters, like, man, yeah, this voice is perfect. So yeah, I, I really did enjoy the narrator for this. Who was it Daniel Henning, I think, or something like that. That's what I was trying to look up, but anyway. uh, I have a new phone and apparently I haven't logged into all my apps yet. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it was Daniel Henning for this one. Yep. Daniel Henning. Daniel Henning. Okay. Um, no, I don't need password assistance. Ray, thoughts on the narrator. <laughs> um, and so, again, at the beginning, I, was, I wasn't I was too sure if I was going to be able to listen the whole way through because um, in the office, it was very dark. It was very dank. And I was like, it's like, okay, I this is going to be depressing if I listen to this guy the whole friggin' time. But again, you got out of that and you got into the island and that's when I found more life came into the characters. And that's when, um, especially again, those kids, he nailed the voices for those characters in such a way that he brought them to life. And this goes back to the whole, am I being read to or is this a performance? And I, I think at first I felt like this was, I was going to be read to and then it became a performance once we got off onto the island. So um yeah i i quite enjoyed it um all of the voices i enjoy they're they're uh except for his pronunciation of gazebo see i guess i completely <laughs> missed it i don't either i missed it or i forgot about it but <laughs> how did he say it gazebo gazebo no, that would have bothered me. I must have forgotten about it. <laughs> yeah. I'll be honest with you. I finished this book a couple of weeks ago, and I've had a lot of stuff going on since then. I was going to say, maybe it was because you're listening at two times speed, and he really said it really quickly. No, it, yeah. it, it still it sounded like Gazebo. So. But uh, no, I, I, I enjoyed the narrator as well. I don't know if there's too much more I can add to that. Um, I, I will ask this. So, Chris, you, you said you don't want to listen to it because you kind of yeah. have – the voices in your head, the way you, you yes. think they should be. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't want to do anything that would ruin that, but like some mm -hmm. of the voices are very distinct. Like, um, Oh, what is the, the oh, yeah. kid? Oh, uh, Chauncey. 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 Yes. Yeah. It's, it's very oh, kind that's of low perfect. and drawn out like this. And I'm just like, yeah, that's, I get, that's how a blob would sound. Is that kind of how you, had it in your head or no absolutely not so yeah we're not gonna say anything else because i don't want to ruin this for you <laughs> really i i quite he, enjoyed he the kind, yeah he kind of told me about that and I was okay like, immediately no no i'm not yeah I ha I, i'm going i have a flow we're going with it that and, and talia talia, is <laughs> I love talia. Freaking yeah yeah she's really i enjoy her um i thought his i thought his female voices were fine uh, you know, sometimes you get a, a narrator that just cannot do the opposite sex. Right. Unfortunately, not being sexist, tends kind and of be female. Yeah, women have a hard narrators time. tend to have a harder time doing a male voice than a male doing a female, um, at least a, a passable female. You know, it's not like you know you're going to be like, oh, that's such a wonderful voice. I'm, so, um, I'll go ahead and start with you on, on this one, Chris. Uh, would you want to read another book by this author? <laughs> Uh, funny you should ask, I have picked up another one of his and it's called, uh, Under the Whispering Door. Um, and I haven't read it cause there's like the first 10 pages in the back of this book. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and the first two lines are Patricia was crying. Wallace Price hated it when people cried. 
So that's the first two lines of his next book. And he's got a couple of other ones out. So I am definitely reading everything that he puts out. I just love his writing style. Um, yeah. So, but again, I'm not ready to ugly cry. So <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna wait, but definitely we'll be reading everything he puts out. Gotcha. Ray? Yeah, I, I'm going to give it another shot. Um, this being the first one. It, <clears throat> uh, Sean kind of touched on it. it. It felt like a Nathan Lowell. It felt like a, that style where it was um, everyday life, just with a twist mm -hmm. and something that I can get behind. It was a good story. Sean? Um, yeah, I would read more by the author. Um, I don't know if I actively go well, because it's it's not my typical what i would normally read but I, mm -hmm. if it came up in book club again i'd be like yeah sure whatever i wouldn't have a problem with it and i wouldn't return it afterwards so there you go um, <laughs> but i'm not looking for something emotional either like chris yeah. seems to be so um, i have and, feels. yeah I, I i like science and uh, <laughs> swashbuckling and all that. I don't need the feels. I got enough feels. Yeah. <laughs> one feel, that's enough. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, it one. confuses I don't me. A second one. Yeah. I don't want to be confused. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, yes, I would read additional. I don't... Uh, I, I'm going to let you take the lead on this, Chris, just because uh, when we talk about other things we've been reading, I've started on another path that we started a month or so ago, uh, last month. Uh, anyway, um... And so I will probably continue going down that path until I reach the end. It's not too far a path, but um, yeah, I just want to kind of stay on that. And and then, like I said, but if you if you come back and you're like, oh no, like this is my next pick, or even if you're just like, no, this this one was really good. I'm moving on to something else. Then I would probably put it on my to do list and eventually hit it. So um, I don't know about y'all, but I, I'm finding I don't know if it's just because I'm getting older, or if it's a mindset I have right now, but it's like, I, I want to find something that I've enjoyed and kind of stick with either that author, or that narrator, that genre or whatever. Right. And, um, which is, I'm, I'm glad we have the book club because it does force me into, you know, trying things that I wouldn't have normally picked up or whatever. Uh, kind of the original point of the, the, the show in the book club. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm finding like with my, uh, my second credit through audible every month, I'm kind of like, all right, well, what have I already read that I liked that they've written something else and, you know, kind of going down those paths. So, uh, but yes, this would, this would end up on, on my to-do list eventually of, you know, other things that he's written. Um, did reading the, the book impact your mood? If yes, how so? Oh, yeah. Uh, Chris, I'll start with you. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Every yeah, I just, either I had a smile on my face because I thought it was so sweet and delightful or I was a bit scowly because I didn't like what was happening. I was in it. So it, it, it completely immersed me. I was in it. So yeah, if it was, if I had to stop on a good note, it was a, it was a good, good way to fall asleep. Um, yeah, I just, I just smiled most of the time. I just thought it was so sweet. <laughs> I really, really liked it. Right. Uh, yeah, there were a few moments where I was laughing out loud, and uh, I, I enjoyed the. Definitely, when they went on their adventures with the kids, that's when I most enjoyed the book. Mm -hmm. um, and overall, it was just a good mood. It was a good story. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'd say it put me in a good mood. John, yeah, I found I I was smiling while I was listening to it. It was just comfort food, yeah. basically. <laughs> Yeah. Um, pretty much same thing. Like I, uh, the whole time, I, like I said, I thought I felt it was a whimsical book. So the whole time it was very, it was very enjoyable. There was no time that I was like, all right, let me wrap up and finish this one up so I can move on to something else or, or something like that. Uh, I, I actively found myself uh, choosing it over trying to catch up on some podcasts. Usually I try to like, all right, clear out all the podcasts for the day or the week, and then we'll continue on the book. Yeah. And I found myself choosing the book. In some cases, I was just like, that's a heavy podcast. I don't know about that one. Let me let me, let me do something to make me a little happier. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, because sometimes, I mean, granted, most of the political podcasts I listen to are all pretty, they try to be upbeat and, and fun or whatever. But depending on what the topic is, sometimes just like, no, I'm, I'm not in the right mood for this right now. So, 
Um, let's see. We've already kind of covered that. Oh, uh, did you find the book overrated or underrated? Chris, you're the one who specifically picked it because it was on some people's yes. list of, of best they've read for a while. Yeah. And, and you know, you, you take people's opinions with a grain of salt. And I kept seeing it over and over again. I'm like, okay. And then I saw it in the bookstore and you read the back and you're like, sure. But yeah, it lived up to the hype. It absolutely lived up to that. This is one of this book um, and the Book of Longings by Sue um, Moon Kid are two of the best books. One of the two, like, two of the best books I've ever read. They're like up there in my top five. I'm so happy I read this. Nice. Yeah. Bray, uh, I mean, it's kind of hard for the rest of us because we didn't, I don't, I, unless y'all went out, I did not go look for like ratings or anything on this book. Uh, <laughs> There have been some previous books I've kind of looked up and been like, well, you know, clearly you're up your own ass about this one. Yeah. Uh, Something about trees, maybe? Love that. <laughs> <laughs> Bardo, I think, was the other oh. one. Oh, God. <laughs> Sorry to break your heart again. No. Yeah, I, I didn't really look up too much. Um, so it wasn't overrated or underrated for me. Uh, I'm, I see online it's got a four and a half star on, uh, on Audible. Mm hmm. I think that's appropriate. So, good deal. Uh, Sean, anything you want to add to that? If you are going to look up reviews and all that for this book, take the ones about where he got the story from with a grain of salt. Um, there is a lot of controversy around this book, which I didn't find out until about afterwards. Really? But yeah. Uh, this story is based around the 60s scoop. Canadian history. Oh. Yeah. Um, no. Uh, fill me in. I have no idea. <laughs> Potentially about that. Is that where we're... Okay. Just in a nutshell, and since I'm a white male, a lot of people probably wouldn't even listen to me, but 60 Scoop was a dark time in Canadian history where they took about 20,000 Native kids and rehomed them. Okay, I remember you that was the 60s. Scoop. Okay, yes, okay. Um, and apparently he he had the idea beforehand, but reading about the 60s scoop is what crystallized the vision for this story. Um, and a lot of the haters about this story, and it is surrounded in controversy, uh, so much so that he nearly committed suicide during Pride Month. Um, oh that uh but a lot of the haters and if you read it they like we're loving the book until they found out about yeah. where it came from and that's to me is just asinine yeah but that's just my opinion but anyway there is controversy so if you're looking up this book and you will see one star reviews based yeah. on that just take it with a grain of salt and hopefully you didn't read too many reviews before reading the story because the I story mean, itself is beautiful. It is. Um, yeah. And I think, that's yeah. Really frustrating because as a, you know, when you're writing a story or you have an idea for a story, sometimes just hearing something clicks other things into place. It has yeah. actually nothing to do with the thing that inspired the things to click into place. It just sparked something else. So for yeah. people- There's a lot of negative uh trying this one so and it's actually kind of surprising that it's such a high review on audible just because of that but hopefully that means people are thinking things through before they start spouting their yeah. vitriol and all that so anyway to me and i didn't find out about this till afterwards too because i was doing a bit of research but i went into the story blind um and even knowing now what i do know i still don't see it yeah um, i don't see but that. i feel for him yeah uh, the, the, it's it was a very rough go from what i've read so hmm. but the, the story itself um and those high reviews i think are earned so and i did read a lot of reviews too that were like there was like problems with the, the homosexuality and problems with the basic fantasy and stuff like that. I was like, really? Just yeah. suck yeah. it up, princess. I know, <laughs> like, <right? come> on. <laughs> I, 
I thought it was a great story and yeah. um, okay. actually re recommending it to my kids. So, okay. yeah. Well, like I said, I didn't read uh, any reviews or anything else. Like I said, it's for me, it's like, okay, someone's, you know, one of our group members has picked a book. All right. Well, mm -hmm. I'm reading it. Like that's, that's all I need to know. And then occasionally if it's a little bit of a rough go, I'll back out and be like, all right, so, Am I, am I missing something here? You can do that? Something going, I know, right? <laughs> oh, my God. You can back out? I didn't know that. No, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll be like, all right, well, let me find out what's going on here and kind of get my head straight or whatever. Because, uh, well, like going back to Lincoln and the Bardo, like you had, Ray had kind of told me a little beforehand, but even then I was just like, the hell's going on here? And I had to read a little bit. I was just like, okay, no, I, I got it now. Like I can, I can move forward with this story. But no, the, none of this. Like, like I said, I actually compared this. This is even though it, it, it says magical kids, like this is closer to X Men than it is Hogwarts. So, like, yeah, I agree. Yeah. And I mean, you know, if you if you have a problem with the the stuff that's in this book, obviously X Men is not your thing. And if that's the case, fuck <laughs> you. But you know, that's my opinion. So, uh, go take it up with Stan. Um, well, yeah, it is. anyway, um, let's see here. What was the next question I was going to ask? Uh, we've already talked about it, if it reminded you of anything else. Um, are there any ling lingering questions from the book that you're still thinking about, Chris? No, no, not. I mean, I, I'm happy with the way it ended, so I'm, I'm in my head, they are happily ever after, so I'm okay. <laughs> okay, fair enough, Ray. Um, I, I, I like the way it wrapped up. I don't want it to like, it, I'm curious about the, the new kid that they were going to, like, yes, like, I <laughs> really want to know more about that. But at the same time, I'm okay with where it ended as well. Yeah. Um, I'm a little bit more curious as to what the aftermath of, uh, oh, yeah, of, everybody, getting, of, of everybody getting fired and, everybody. and kind of where that's all going to go, which is kind of fun and interesting as well. So, um, yeah. Sean. Oh man. I, I wanted to see what was in those files. Like, Oh yeah. yeah. I, I, this would make an awesome TV series. Yeah. Like it reminded me of like Friday the 13th TV series where it was like tracking down all the evil objects kind of thing. Mm -hmm. They made a whole series. Of, this would be like that too. This would be, Find a new kid a week. That'd be awesome. <laughs> and that would be fun. Um, yeah, I, I I didn't even think about as a TV series. Yeah, this would be great actually as a TV series. Um, but yeah, I, I I I am like you. I do find I like where it wrapped up. I do think it is a complete story. But yeah, if we got a second book, I totally wouldn't mind it. Like uh, like you, uh, Ray brought up the. Um, uh, you know, uh, you know, finding out, you know, about more of the kids, like you said about, you know, finding out what's in the files or whatever, um, seeing what Lucy continues to do, like it would be like, see, that would be interesting in, in that if there was a second book, do we pick up right afterwards where we where we're inducting this new kid? Do we put it just a little bit further or would it be more fun to go a little ahead in the future where the kids are a little bit older and, and see what's going on there. But like I said, I'm fine with where it left off. If it's if this is all we get in this universe, I'm I'm completely fine with it. Uh, but yeah, if we got more, I would not be opposed to it. So mm -hmm. I think it'd be interesting to go like about a year after, mm -hmm. and to, to you know, I mean, you always have to create some tension of some sort. So I would be curious what the vacuum of those people being fired because the, the vacuum always draws in. Potentially worse people sometimes. So yes, I'm curious as to what that would be like. And now, you, but now you've got the backing of the town to help out with the mm -hmm. island as well. So right. And it might be one of those things that you know now you know. Well, the the government who is over this is is out. So what are we? Gonna, oh, we're going to outsource it. So now we have a business. And now you you yeah. kind of look at that. But like you said, we've at least, they've at least got the the town to back up on that one. So, and, and seeing more interactions with the kids and the, the townspeople would also be fun to see. So, um, yeah. the more you say about this, the more I actually do want a sequel <laughs> or a TV series or something. So, uh, but yeah, that would be fun. 
Um, let's see here. Um, we'll, we'll end with this one. Did you find the book? Would you recommend the book? Why or why not, Chris? Oh, we are, I already have. I recommend it to my therapist. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, she, she, uh, yeah, she put it on her TBR list. Uh, yeah, we recommend we talk to her niece about it um well we were looking for other books two girls in the bookstore came oh, up yeah. i was like what, what, what was that what was that yeah <laughs> nice yeah. before i'd even read it it was just off of the the person who worked there's uh review of it and uh, mm. I, I just but i had it finished it <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah I that finished part it. Finished it. so no, i'd I let them know yeah no yeah. you need to read the book yes yeah. <laughs> so I, nice. I, absolutely i would i'm now i'm i'm I got. I didn't know anything about the sixty scoop in Canada. I know shockingly. It's embarrassing how little I know about our about our own yeah. history. So I gotta. I gotta look into that because that just. I feel. I don't know. How I feel not that I doesn't take anything away from the story. I just feel like when you're a writer, people and you release it out to the world, people take it and do what they want with it. And sometimes it's not. Yeah. What you meant. And yeah. They don't care. They're going to take it and run with it the way they want to anyway, because yeah. they saw something in it that was similar in their I, eyes. And I, I, this is a beautiful story. Yeah. So, so I got to look at more of that now. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Sean? Oh, yeah. Um, like I said, I, I'd recommend it to my kids. And mm -hmm. yeah. no, it's, it's a fairly straightforward, simple story when it comes down to it, which. Mm -hmm. For some that aren't avid readers, this would be perfect for them. Yeah. So. Yep, I wholeheartedly agree. Uh, if, if you've listened to this episode and not read this book, sorry we spoiled stuff. Of course, why were you listening to this episode? But um, no, seriously, if you haven't read it, go go read it. I, I, um, I, I do have some people in mind that uh, I think would greatly enjoy it, and I'm, I'm, I'm I am going to, to search them out and. I didn't want to say too much before we recorded the episode because uh, sometimes y'all will bring up opinions and ideas that I'm just like, Hey, think about that. You know, think about that a little bit more, yeah. but uh, no, I'm, I'm, this is one I'd be like, no, I, I enjoyed this. Like if, if, uh, if, um, and like I said, even though I'm comparing it to X-Men, it's still not, it's not like there's no, like Sean said, there's no super highs. There's no super lows. There is, there is some, you know, um, Mild tension. Mild tension. <laughs> There's some. There is some conflict, but it's never, it's never like you know, super enraged or anything like that. It's like you know, no one's, no one's coming to you know, destroy the world. Even though Lucy technically, everyone, that's everyone's fear is like, so he's here to destroy the world, huh? Okay, cool. <laughs> so, but sorry, the cat wants in. Um. Yeah. So we'll wrap up with that. Uh. Final thoughts. Anything? Any last thing that we didn't cover? Chris, that um, no, I think we, I think we pretty much it. I like, I like comparing to. It's like a mix between the Umbrella Academy and Miss Peregrine's School for Peculiar Children. Uh, Umbrella Academy is a yeah. excellent way to compare this. Yeah, you're right. That That's it definitely I, smacks of that. Yeah, because uh, the 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 department reminds me a lot of the. I think it's the commission mm -hmm. from, from Umbrella Academy. I, I, that's what I pictured in my head when um when i was reading it so that yeah that's a that's a good poll so. ray i just yeah go enjoy it uh whether you read it or listen to it uh i think you'll enjoy it sean yeah that's nothing new i think we covered everything um yeah i would recommend this one this is a, a light read that's a feel good if you're feeling low, read this book. Yep. Uh, that's not really anything else I can add to it, but yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, I know we didn't really go into a lot of the different characters. We hit a few of them here and there, uh, but I'd almost say that's that's great. That's actually better. So now that you can go into the book, uh, if like I said, if you haven't read it or whatever, um, <laughs> and, um, and and you get to discover some of these these fun kids that have these really weird quirks that you're just like, okay, so that's a thing. Um, all right, cool. Um, but yeah, I, I I did enjoy the book, and like I, like I think pretty much everyone said, you know, if we if we we come across another one from the author or a sequel, we'll probably uh, give it a shot for the book club. So 
this is in my rotation now. Like, I, I <laughs> okay, fair enough. You read rotation, so yeah, yeah. This would actually this would be a good one, like Sean said. It, it does remind you a little bit of Nathan uh, Nathan Lowell. So it's like, do I really want to go through the whole series or just need a little little taste? And this might be the way to get that little taste before you move yeah. on to. Trying to reread Skippy or something. So, <laughs> which, by the way, just real quick, have either one of y'all even begun? No. That track, I haven't either, and it's I don't know. So if it's just, many. Yeah, it's such a long path to go down, but God, that was there was some fun stuff in there. There's, I know there's jokes in there. I completely forgot that when I hit him again, I'll laugh out loud again. But so. yeah, I, I still haven't finished that series yet. So. Oh, oh, dude. Depending on who you ask, he hasn't finished that series either. But. Yeah. <laughs> I, still, I still have a lot of books to, to catch I, I really need at least another half book. I'll be honest with you. I, <laughs> the way it ended, I, I, there's some more information that's needed. Um, Well, that is it for our main uh, review of the book. Uh, just looking ahead, uh, even though we're recording this in July and it will be released in July, July's book is Earthside by Dennis E. Taylor. I already know everyone has enjoyed the book. Uh, how much? That will be our discussion. Uh, so if you have not read Earthside yet, um, number one, if you haven't read Earthside, you need to go back and read, you need to go read the first one because uh, it's fantastic. I know it's on everyone's list. Uh, August is um, number one in customer service, The Complete Adventures of Tom Stranger by Larry... Cordelia? Cordelia? Uh, that's Sean's pick, right? Yep. Yep. Uh, and then September is How to Do Nothing by Jenny O'Dell, and that is Jennifer's pick. So uh, let's move on to what we've been reading. Uh, Chris, would you like to go first? Sure. Um, I just finished um, two nights ago um, a really cool book called Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett. It was really, it was really, this was the academic book that had footnotes. I'm like, okay. Hey, footnotes in books. Completely draws me out of the story. Um, there weren't a lot of them, but it was still like, when you see the little asterisks and then you got, and it's like in the middle of the page and then you go down and read and you get, anyway. Uh, it wound up being a really cute book. Um, again, it's it's one of those even kill. It's not, I mean, it's high stakes, but it doesn't feel high stakes. And it's very well researched. Like this woman did a lot of research on, on fairy lore and stuff like that. Um, and then uh, last night I started uh, The Horse and His Boy by C.S. Lewis. That's the fifth book in the Chronicles of Narnia uh, okay. series. Uh, and I'm only like a chapter in. So, um, And then I'm listening to uh, Goblet of Fire. Okay. Uh, All right. <laughs> um, I haven't really actually read anything else. I started listening to a couple of the, like just re-listening to some other books. A lot of podcasts. Uh, there was uh, the NHL um, uh, free agency recently, so I listen to a lot of podcasts and a bunch of other stuff. So not a lot of books. Pardon me. Fair enough, uh, Sean. Um, so I listened to Delta V, and it's I'm in about halfway through its follow up book, Critical Mass, by Daniel Suarez. Just I love Daniel Suarez. I do it too. Is, um. This one, it, it got a lot of negative reviews. Which one? The first one or the second one? Well, as a combo series, I guess. Okay. Um, but man, I love them. I, uh, I'll be so honest great. with you. I did not love Delta V. In fact, it was probably one of my least favorite books that he's done uh -huh. until I read Critical Mass. And Critical Mass totally turned that book for me. Like, it totally turned the first book for me. And I'm like, oh, no, I, I like this series now. Uh, I, so I'm about halfway through Critical Mass, which is the second one. Um, man, it, <coughs> there's a lot of similarities in his writing style, though. Like, holy crap! Um, cause, like, I'm all the whole time I'm listening, I'm like, whoa, Damon and stuff like that. Like, it's just he has a very distinct style that he carries mm -hmm. through all of his books. It just so happens I really like it. He's Same. so meticulous too. in planning things through, um, which is, yeah, it's been great. Plus, uh, the narrator, uh, Jeff Gurner. Oh, it's fantastic. He is so good. I actually, I looked him up on YouTube and I actually, I found a couple of spots of him, uh, Daniel Suarez and him on like a YouTube podcast, or whatever. And he's reading excerpts from 
Daniel Suarez book. Mm-hmm. It's so cool to like see him switch in accents and voices in real life. It's like, well, cause he's not who I pictured. He, okay. I'm going like, to have to go look it up. Then. <laughs> it was, it was really neat. So anyway, yeah, I'm about halfway through critical mass right now. And yeah, I have no idea what I'm going to read next, but. Oh. Yeah. So you and I, it. if we don't bring it up on the book club, you and I only have to have a conversation about it. Cause like I said, Delta V was not my favorite. And then I, once I read critical mass, some of the stuff that he brings up in that and kind of, it reminds me not to give anything away, but it reminds me very much of how, uh, cause the only other book series he's done where he's done a sequel was, uh, yeah, demon was... And, and, and freedom. Yeah. Um, and, um, the stuff that pays off in the second book and wraps around to the first part, uh, he does that again. And like I said, in the second book, and that's what made me go, Oh no, I, I like this series now. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I actually went through and read almost, I think I reread almost all of his books the other, like a couple months ago. So I just, his stuff so, is so addictive. It is. It is very good. So uh, we may have to pick one of his books. i uh, see. I don't think, I don't think the ladies would enjoy uh, all of the uh, uh, grotesque killing that happens in some of the books. The what? The grotesque killing that happens in some of yeah, the books. Yeah, some of it's pretty brutal. Uh, no, but like the the world that he paints, where he's trying, the world that we're oh. trying to get to, that he paints in Freedom. Yeah. Jennifer would be like, "Oh my God, yes, I want to live in that world." Like that would be. <laughs> it's so interesting. Um. I honestly have not really read anything else. I like I said, I kind of got on his kick, and I was just like, I don't know if I really want to read, like I really don't want to get in depth on anything else right now. So the only other thing that I've read that was new was um, I'm continuing on with the Witcher series, and I was kind of hoping, all right, cool, we read the book of all the short stories. What is the next book in the series that maybe will give me a little more meat to you know attach on to? And unfortunately, the next book in the series was Sword of Destiny. Uh, and it was another book of short stories, <laughs> but I enjoyed it. I, I knew what I was going in for. Um, this one seems a little more, it seems, I know it's not chronological, but it seemed a little more chronological. Um, and I, I enjoyed several of the short stories. There were some of them that were just like, um, uh, and, and what's his name? Um, uh, cause go. he's got a different name in the books. Oh, 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 Dandelion. Dandelion. Yeah. yeah. Um, he is in it a lot. And that's th- honestly, that is the that's that's when the Witcher is at its best, is when he's fighting a monster and you got fancy pants over here, like just <laughs> mouthing off. It's I that's some of my favorite parts of these books, <laughs> of these book series. So um oddly enough, whenever Unifer comes in, I'm just like, oh god, you again. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you have to be such a bitch? <laughs> so, anyway, that's the only other thing that I've been reading. Um, well, there's our show for the month, ladies and gentlemen. If you would please give us a five star rating on wherever you listen to this show. Uh, previously, I used to say you could catch us on iTunes, Google, Stitcher, or pretty much anywhere you can find podcasts. Uh, but I've got to amend that. If you are listening to this show or any of the Epically Geeky shows on Stitcher and you either haven't heard or they haven't notified you yet. Uh, in August, Ditcher is dropping podcasting. Uh, they were purchased by Sirius XM uh, back in 2020, and they have decided they are going to remove podcasts from the Stitcher platform and apparently roll it into the Sirius XM platform somehow or another. Uh, apparently, they haven't really got any information on that yet, so a lot of people are kind of like really weirded out about that. Uh, I know there are podcasters who were who signed contracts with them that were like exclusive to Stitcher, and I'm sure they're all kind of running around like chickens with their head cut off trying to figure out what they're going to do now, but uh, probably just go wide like everyone else. But in any case, um, I'm not planning on putting our feeds on uh, uh, Sirius XM stuff. Uh, if it's anything like it was with Stitcher, it was a nightmare to get done. Uh, but if if we do have a listener that that's your preferred way of listening to podcasts and you really want to keep listening to the shows, uh, please send us an email to epicallygeekysite at gmail.com or find us on all the social stuff at Epically Geeky. Send me a message. Say yes, absolutely. Will you please put it on there? 
and I'll do my best to get it done. So uh, I can't guarantee it's going to be quick because that was one of the biggest problems with Stitcher was I submitted our shows and it took like months for them to finally like do one. And then like the next three just like dropped really quickly. But I'm just like, what is the deal? Um, but yeah, it's it's uh, I, apparently I, it never was a big thing for me. But apparently there are people who really loved it as their way to get podcasts. And if you're one of those people, let me know. So um and like I was saying, you can check us out at Epically Geeky, where you can find all the shows we do, including the Marginally Geeky, Epically Geeky, Sustainably Geeky, and Mar- uh, Creatively Geeky shows. You can find us on the social media stuff at Epically Geeky, including Threads, you know, the brand new one that just dropped that everyone's trying to figure out what the hell they're going to do with it now, uh, you know, as, as Twitter slowly keeps circling the drain, apparently, so... But uh, yeah, you can find us on all that stuff. We're not that active, but you can find us. Oh, one more thing I do want to point out. Uh, if you are a fan of these shows and you go to our website, you will find a new link up at the top for a merch store. Uh, I have finally gotten around to putting all of our logos on shirts. So if you like any one of the shows or all the shows, you can you can buy a shirt with the logo on there. Um, or the one I was going back through shirt ideas that we had on the Epically Geeky show, and I found one that I'm just like, nope, this has to be a shirt. So uh if uh, if you Canada Canada, uh, I've got a shirt for you. So, uh, where can we find you online, Chris? On Instagram and Threads at Movie Bit Life. Ray, uh, Instagram and Threads. Uh, the the reluctant Yeti. Sean, screwing with Wikipedia, and uh, your favorite broken toy spelled the Canadian way on Instagram. And as always, you can follow my individual wacky adventure online at Optimachine on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. For everyone on the site, have a good night.